welcome friends uh, to this session on writing it out your ideas see the very purpose that you have chosen to listen to this session is you all kind of agree that you know writing is a good art for some reason because we are in the digital age we have lost that touch of writing the ideas maybe because uh you know always the digitals like you know laptops your well, mobile phones are with us book and pen may not be with us or writing on a book may sometime we feel that a uh, little odd or we must have lost touch with writing so several things may happen but we kind of agree that you know writing about our ideas tasks goals is helpful we all know but it is just that it is not happening so the very purpose that you have chosen to spend this time for this session is you all agree that writing your ideas your thoughts your tasks your objectives or uh, is going to help it is just that we want to underline that habit we want to inculcate that habit okay so let us first dwell into the idea of writing it down and see the benefits involved and then we will have some experiential insights wherein i can share how i got benefited because of writing it down my ideas my tasks on day to day basis and then we can as well share our own experiences with this let us get into the session called writing it down your ideas your thoughts our ideas our thoughts and our tasks and our objectives and learn how it is going to be beneficial for us writing it down our ideas right so see friends the very purpose that writing with our own hand with our own pen or pencil on a paper right it helps us a lot because we all know more or less what is good our ideas our thoughts are mostly good we know to be successful what to be done we know the good aspects it is just that we don't try it let us learn if you write it your thought your idea your task on a paper okay now if you write it no it gets into a progress if you don't write it just like many other thoughts right it gets into no use zone that means the thought the idea that gets slipped in as with many other ideas for example let's take an idea saying that we want to be healthy okay you want to devote a uh, one hour time for walking or you want to devote one hour for yoga right and the moment you write it you know unconsciously you see that it gets into progress that means uh, you are committed to show progress on what you have written it happens it does miracle right and let's assume that you know in office you know that these are the top 3 things that can help you in this week and beginning of the week if you write it on paper saying these are the 3 4 things that i want to do in this week and by the time you complete the week you end up uh, finishing those tasks unknowingly so it is proven that when you write it you end up making progress on those objectives those those ideas unknowingly right it just that writing it down you know maybe pen may not be there paper may not be there if pen is there it may not write it properly or as and where as and when we go to some other meeting pen and paper may not be there so uh, many challenges may be there or you find that 
we lost touch with the writing right so these obstacles will be there but we should be conscious that whenever we want to start a good habit this maya will offer many obstacles to us that means in your life you know if i want to do something then many obstacles will come and it will be posed by the context and and you end up not going in a progressive path so whenever you start a new habit may not be necessary a writing any new habit you suddenly see many obstacles coming to you for example from tomorrow i want to devote one hour time for exercise then suddenly you see you stay up very late today such that it is hard to uh, wake up tomorrow so i have analyzed whenever i want to start a new theme a good theme that can be beneficial to me or to my team i see that in 90% scenarios obstacles will come then i am now uh, conscious that yes because it is a good idea because it is going to do good to me these obstacles will come it will make sure that i don't start so that is why i want to be patient i want to be conscious that i slowly with patience remove those obstacles and make sure that i go to the habit i start my habit right so similarly when you want to start writing pen may not be there if it is there it will not work properly paper will not be there or book may not be there or even if a book is there a book of where you want to write may not be there and you may not take pen and paper to a specific meeting so such kind of obstacles will come so you have to be conscious that you know you need to solve those things patiently and you need to start writing the moment you write you suddenly realize that you end up finishing those tasks with good progress if you don't write it may so happen that you end up working whatever ideas or whatever objectives that people ask you to do no matter whether they are urgent they are important you you tend to solve things as and when it comes in your way and suddenly you see that okay i have worked today but what i have finished today i don't know this meeting that meeting that meeting i have spoke to this person this i solved that i solved but the most important thing i have not solved so it doesn't give you satisfaction that is why my friends if you want to write first be conscious that context will pose many obstacles to you it is not only to you it is to me to anybody who want to start a new habit so be conscious of those obstacles and make sure that you are committed to solve it with patience okay so your thoughts your ideas your task when you write it down it gives you progress point number 1 point number 2 you see friends we all are gifted with unique strengths that's why we came to this level but suddenly uh if you write it down for example any concept on a piece of paper and if you want to develop the concept the narrative right at the end of the day you see very happy are yaar this is how the concept has started this is the background this is the context this is the trigger this is what i want to do and this is what it is so at the end of the day when you shape a writing related uh, shape and you write it down on a piece of paper about your idea you get further thoughts because when the idea is in your brain it gets to some shape but the moment you write it right what happens is the idea goes to next phase of it right and then your brain starts working from that phase and it takes you to some other place and then you, what happens is you you uh, close the uh, you know task of writing and then you get to another task or uh, you may sleep or or the night and uh, next day this thought the brain will process this thought and it will take you next level so unknowingly you end up doing friendship with your brain and writing and unknowingly you see that you started your idea 
at some place, but you are taking it to further, further and further away. So at the end of the day, you, be, you feel happy with what progress you have done. Okay. The second thing, if you go to neurology, you know, we have seven chakras inside us. Okay. And the root chakra is here at the bottom. Okay. Now, when you write, it connects us with the root chakra, that is our inner self. The root chakra is blessed with utmost energy. It just requires a command. And the moment you give, you give command to your root chakra, it makes you work in autopilot mode with focused energy. So when you write down with your own hand, that objective, that goal, that idea, that task will get transcended to the root chakra and you, you basically become an autopilot and you end up seeing that you complete it with utmost concentration, sincerity, subconsciously. I have seen friends, there are people who comes to office, they write down their tasks. And that's it. They, tip, they pick up a task, they complete it, they come there, tick mark. Then they go to next task. They focus one thing at a time. They are highly efficient. Why? Because when you write, your ideas get more cemented. When you write, you get connected to your inner self. That is the root chakra. And it makes you complete that specific task or it makes you give more light to the idea such a way that you will be efficient and you pursue that idea, you pursue the task to the level that you want to complete and then you will come there and tick mark. So friends, while I was working with Wipro, I happened to speak to Ajim Premji. In one of the session, he was telling that when you write, you get connected to your inner self. And that is true. I also experienced it. Right? When I write, I get connected to my root chakra, my inner self, and I end up seeing myself more focused, more committed, and I do one thing at a time. If somebody wants to disturb me in between or somebody wants to assign a task to me, I say, let me complete this task, then I'll come to you. Is it okay? This way, I create the, the time, focus, energy to complete the task till that point in time. So that's why when you write, when you inculcate the habit of writing, when you resume your habit of writing, it connects you to your root chakra that is inner self. So this is not something that I'm experiencing. This is told to me by great people like Ajim Premji. See friends, generally we estimate very aggressively. For example, if you want to reach your work office, okay, uh, how much time will it take? You think about happy path and say it takes half an hour. But if traffic comes, if uh, uh, you know some some deviation happens, uh, you don't think about those obstacles. You think about objective. You estimate very aggressively, and then you struggle. Are are I'm not reaching office on time? Okay, I estimated thirty minutes, but it's taking forty five minutes. I'm getting delayed in the delayed to the meeting. That and all we be, we will be thinking because we only think about our objective, that is output. We don't think about obstacles involved. But when you write your idea, when you write your dream goal, then what are all the inputs that are required? What are the tools and techniques or the processes that are used to convert input into output? Is it that only this output or this objective I have to meet or any other objectives also as a derivative I have to meet. It gives you a bigger picture. See friends, I have written my dream of completing my MBA on a paper. Okay. And then I then realized 
I am following up with different institutes, which institute I have to do my MBA. I have done my MTech, but then to do MBA, why I have to do, where I have to do, what are my constraints, what are my challenges, which institute I have to pursue, when is their entrance examination, all those things in an autopilot mode I have discovered. And believe me, my friends, I'm so fortunate that I end up completing my MBA within the stipulated time. That is the power of writing, my friends. You can pursue your goals. It will give you bigger picture. It will make you understand why you are, uh, you know, why you are uh, pursuing the dream. Currently, I am doing my PhD. Now, pursuing my work, pursuing my personal responsibilities, sparing some time or spending some time for my PhD course, it is difficult. But the moment I have a bigger picture, stating why I should complete my PhD, then I'll be committed to that cause. Then what are my inputs? For example, what are the research journals that I have to go through? Okay, what do I have the necessary access permission to them or not? If I don't have those permission, to whom I have to pursue? And how often I have to visit my university? How often I have to visit my uh, guide? How often I have to consult my fellow full-time research scholars? All those things will come automatically. It is just that I have to write my big, my goal, my objective. I have to see what are the inputs required, what are the tools and techniques I use to convert the inputs into output. And then I suddenly see that, you know, what are the challenges involved? I have, I happened to visit my university uh, yesterday. And then I happen to discuss with my fellow scholars about the challenges involved in each and every step. Today, I may feel that, you know, RAR, I'm very far away from the target. But the moment you make progress week on week, day on day, beautifully within two weeks, you see yourself that, you know, you are at a better position. See, friends, I'm telling you today, reaching goals is important. But the process of reaching goal is more important. Today, the best judge about me is myself. If I am happy with myself, stating I have done my best to this objective, given my constraints, I get satisfaction. When I work with sincerity towards my objective, consciously knowing that I am doing my best, at the end of the day, whether I achieve the objective outcome or not, but I will be very happy for sure at the end of every day. So the moment you write your objective, you not only identify that own that alone objective, but the related objectives, related outputs you will see. And then you will see what are the inputs required, what are the tools and techniques is required to convert inputs to outputs. And you suddenly see the challenges involved. And then, okay, I'm giving less time to this. It requires more effort for me. So... If I have to complete it with quality, I have to spend more conscious efforts about it. Do I really require to pursue this? Okay. Then if I have to pursue, then this much amount of time I have to allocate this. This is how you will start doing engineering with yourself. Right? You start yourself maturing. See, friends, I'm telling you, today we need to be good students because learning, we can learn anywhere across. Many people are there to teach us. Right? We need to be good students because we need to be answerable to our inner self that, you know, we are pursuing our dreams and we are doing our best. And for that, the simple thing that is required is write it down. The next one is brain gets free. See, friends, the moment you start writing, what happens is you will categorize your tasks. The first thing is what are the work related tasks? What are my personal tasks? What are the tasks that I wanted to assign to my reportee? What are the tasks that I want to assign it to my uh, uh, wife? Right? So this way, you not only, uh, uh, you know, write down the tasks required, but you categorize them in such a way that you basically arrive at the tasks that you are actually doing. Right? And then work related. Now, if you add uh, the due date, that means task one should be completed by 5th February, 
then you will understand are yaar i am working on task 3 which is supposed to be completed by 8th february what is the need let me first start on task 1 it needs to be finished by 5th february so you basically dump whatever is there in brain to the paper so brain gets free right when you day when you add a date to a specific task it becomes a uh, uh, imperative for you that you focus on the immediate tasks so this is how my notes is going to be okay now now friends i'm telling you if you see the anatomy of human brain it is having several layers may not be in this sequential fashion but right uh, uh in in a different way the human brain is having layers layer 1 layer 2 several layers right on top of that uh, your ram is there right so random access memory right and that is important for you to fast access it now when you uh write it now the dump is on the paper so your brain the layers of your hard drive gets freed up your ram is focused with the task that you are doing so the moment you write it my friends your ram is filled with only one objective or one task at a time believe me my friends the people who are having blood pressure the people who are uh, 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 who gets more emotionally uh, uh, more emotional they shout you see there is a possibility that they end up doing many things at the same time but if you inculcate the habit of doing one thing at a time that means your ram is filled with only one task and your other layers will get freed up because all the dump is on the paper so you will be filled with only one task and your brain will never get stressed up and it is a healthy sign for you you work for many years you will be efficient in the task and you know what you become eng eng in terms of memory usage and so you your brain can function for many years this way you will be more useful to the world and to the yourself so that's why when you uh, write it up the load gets transferred to the paper and your several layers several layers of your brain and the ram gets filled with only one objective and you will never get stressed up okay so that is the advantage of this okay now the moment you add prioritization for example okay i have added a uh, task one it's priority one priority one means it's something that is with high priority i have to complete there's a it's it adds lots of value if i don't work on it you know something gets broken so i have to work on it priority two means probably uh, i may complete within 16 hours within two days priority one means within four hours i have to complete priority two means within two to three days i can complete priority three means i can complete probably in three days so when you uh, apply prioritization to each task you suddenly see are yaar i i am actually to the task 3 i have given as 8th february but it's priority one task to me it cannot be by 8th february it has to be by 5th february probably i may change the date of task 2 to 8th february so this way you basically assign uh, uh, priorities and you can juggle and shuffle your task you all know about it i also know it is just that when it is office work we do diligently systematically when it is my own work i don't do it i'm repeating my friends when it comes to the office work somebody observes somebody monitors we end up very systematic but when it comes to our own work we are not systematic you can ask me why the doctors who suggest better ways of living they themselves are not sincere at their own health otherwise every doctor should live for 100 years right so even we are doctors to our own context when it comes to you know our contributions at work we are very systematic but when it comes to me i am not sincere 
getting up at five o'clock, probably some years before we used to get up at four o'clock. But today, getting up at five o'clock, very difficult for us. Why? We're not serious about us. We don't spend basic things with us. And when we don't spend basic things with us, when you don't structure our body properly, how can we live long? How can we meet our commitments? How can we have satisfaction in future? So it is not that we don't know. We know it. It is just that application of these good things to us. We are lazy. What all I'm telling is, if you write, it will come automatically to us. Right? Next thing. The other point is, you have a shift left strategy. That means, now, what are urgent? You will put it on the right x-axis here. Here. That means, urgent means you have to complete. If you don't complete, something is going to fall, break. Not urgent means you don't need to work within three days, within five days. Okay, Urgent are tasks which you have to complete today or in maximum two days. Now, not urgent means within a week, within two weeks, within a month, probably within next quarter, I can complete. So that is not urgent. Important means what add value to you and to the team. That is important. What adds value to you and team is important. Because if, for everybody, there will be somebody who will be consuming our services. So we have to look through their eyes. For example, if I start my week, I, th I think about, okay, what my stakeholders expect out of me? Who are important stakeholders? What they expect out of me? And out of those things, what are the things that I can add value where I also see growth in myself? So the combination is an important, right? So, so the important tasks are something that helps the growth of the, the company that you work for, the stakeholders, and to yourself. Not important means somebody else also can do. It's not necessarily that you should be doing. Uh, you know, it is just that at this point in time, uh, you know, you are there, you are picking it up. So the point I'm trying to convey is the moment you are on urgent, that means the right strategy here, right, right? That means within two days you have to do. For example, uh, there are certain tasks where you, you, you do important and urgent. That means you only have to do and uh, there is a good value if you work for it to the team and to yourself and it has to be finished within two days. Please understand, whenever you go for urgent quadrant, no, it applies pressure on us. This applies pressure on us because you have to complete. So you can't apply your innovation, your focus. See friends, I'm telling you, Slow is fast. Fast is slow. So when you think slow, you can actually get the best outcome out of us. So within two days, I have to complete. That means you get pressure. For example, a student who is going for an examination and he has to complete, let's say, 80% of syllabus in just one day or two days. Then what happens? He'll be just following his shortcuts and he will not be able to bring his best Rather, he'll be following what is the shortcuts and he goes for luck and we don't know whether the result is going to be good or bad. Similarly, at the work also, your presentation has to be presented to important stakeholders, probably the CXO meeting tomorrow. We don't you know, complete it or we don't identify the task and we don't start it just one day before we start. Then it has to be reviewed by many people and then we have to go there and Certain reviews may take more time. And ultimately, it is just a chaos in ad hoc way we will do. So that's why when you work on urgent quadrant, please understand that you are losing your health because you are working with many constraints and that applies pressure to your brain, to your body. Now, if it is important and urgent, okay, understandable. But friends, I'm telling you, you start your office, let's say at 10 o'clock. By the time 1 o'clock happens every day, how many important things you do? You check yourself. You attend this meeting, that meeting, that meeting. You write this. One o'clock. One o'clock. It's, it's uh, lunch time. And uh, uh, you see what I have done. Just attended the meetings. That means you basically spend your time for urgent and not important tasks. Just because you don't strategize for the day, for the week, for the month and for the quarter. So when you work on urgent and not important, many tasks, 
That means somebody else are supposed to do that those tasks. But you are doing because we identified late in the game. Because the task, the objective was identified late. Because it takes time to explain to a reportee that what needs to be done, they take more, it takes more time to explain. You are doing. Had you identified this probably one week before, you could have told no to a reportee stating, boss, at that point in time, I can't grant leave because there's an urgent task involved. So we are not fore-focused, fore right? We identified late in the game. Now, because we identified late in the game, what happens is instead of the reportee, you will be doing. Instead of a reviewer role, you will be doing authoring role. So instead of you will be, you will end up doing where somebody else are supposed to help you and what will happen to your task. Many a time what will happen is most of us are urgent and not important tasks we'll be doing. And the moment you spend more time on urgent and not important, that means this quadrant, right? This quadrant. Now what happens is uh, uh, you will be inefficient. Your health will be at risk. You do not enjoy your job. You do not enjoy your life. See, friends, I'm telling you, it is not that you have crores of rupees. Wealth is not the wealth today. Wealth is combination of money more in terms of how you process your life. Right? So we have to go to the shift left. That means important and not urgent. That means a task that needs to be done two weeks before. We have to identify. We have to identify here. And we have to mark it here. The moment you write it down here, then you, you understand. Two weeks from now, I have this important meeting. I have to present this. Then who all are supposed to help me? And you can start assigning the task. You will have three to four days buffer. And then you compile it. You review it. You get it reviewed by your stakeholders. And then you go, uh, you know, well prepared. And let us assume that something is not presented there. It is not your mistake. It is a group effect. Right? Because... You not only took input from your reportees, but also from other people who are all involved, connected to this. This way, it is going to be a team effect than your effect. And it's going to be a pleasant experience. So we need to spend time on important and not urgent quadrant. And I'm telling you, friends, many people who are in production support and other things, right? They will be spending tasks on urgent quadrant, mostly on not important tasks. Then what happens is frustration, bad health, all those things will happen. But I can tell you that by writing, what happens is you can get to important and not urgent where you'll be working with task, with slowness, with focus, and you will add more value. So I can say that writing it down makes you healthier because you can identify the task, the objectives, the ideas, on the important and not, not urgent quadrant, okay? The next thing is, uh, so it makes you relevant. Friends, when in a meeting room or a classroom, uh, when meeting is happening, let's say, now write down the keywords. For example, it may so happen that you go to a technical meeting where you are not uh, very much uh, conversant with the technology, but still write it down. The moment you write down the key keywords, See, some people will write paragraphs and paragraphs. No, I'm not saying that. Write down the keywords. In a 30 minutes meeting, there will be four or five keywords. That's all. Not more than that. Okay. Write down the keywords. When we write keywords, you become engaged. You become relevant. For example, let us assume that we don't write. We go to a meeting where the meeting subject and the expertise is different. Then what happens? is you become sleepy. Okay, if it is in the afternoon, uh, you tend to doze, saying that just like this, and then others will look at you. That's not right. So everybody will think that, you know, oh, so-and-so person is not attentive. See, it is not about attentiveness. It's about that subject is altogether different for us. But how do I make sure that, you know, I get engaged? I write it down. The keywords, who told, who, who told what? That's it. Now, what happens is when we write it down, then there will be some unknowns. For example, whenever I enter in a meeting where the subject is altogether different, there will be some new words that I have to learn. Right? I write it down so that after coming back to my desk, 
explore those ideas and i get a fair idea even though there's a new technology right it makes us stay focused and also in future for example when you are a leader and you manager now you can refer back to the page and say on this date you told about it uh, what is the progress about it then rear he remembers it i have to to go to him i have to prepare about my action items they think about it many a times in today's world meetings happen action items will be discussed minutes will be published but people don't act on action items they come to the new meeting but they don't pursue mostly about the action items discussed in the last meeting the moment you say in the last meeting which happened 15 days before and these these things were not uh, with these these things were discussed where do we stand it elevates you i will share my personal experience see when my son was studying 9th class and 10th class in a parent teacher meeting the parent has the teacher has given a list of good areas and improvement areas now i have wrote down all those things now 3 months down the line when we go to parent teacher meeting i told to the teacher saying that last time you said these things are going good is it happening continuously is it continuing now these things you said improvement can be there do you think that my son has shown improvement in this it made both the teacher and my son surprised what did i do i didn't do anything new just i wrote down and i make sure that the book is with me and i refer to that book so when we write down the keywords it makes us learn you can refer to it in future and believe me my friends it makes us learn new things because today in the private sector we have to learn tomorrow we may get retired if we don't perform well we have to learn so if we don't learn our earning will stop so writing it down will give you relevant keywords that you should pick up knowledge and that makes you learn and that becomes your differentiating factor see friends i am telling you i have seen personally the great people certain people are younger to me they write it down okay they write down they work on it they come and come uh, close it down so generally i see a pattern the people who write their tasks they are sincere in action noble in their purpose so so i feel that if we inculcate the habit of writing there is high possibility that our purposes will be noble and our our actions will be sincere so this way we can learn and we can be a differentiator okay now friends i'm telling you the moment you put your idea to see you write a mind map about it okay this particular thing has got this and these these sub topics are there they are related like this like this so the moment you prepare a mind map it becomes a beautiful story for you friends you you become see friends i'm telling you you become a guiding factor a checklist a thought enabler for your team okay you thought about it these these sub topics are well explained what about these sub topics did you analyze see friends i'm to, i'm telling you the experts today they lack sincerity or they lack the art of storing the information the world requires somebody who acts as a checklist or who acts as a filler to to discover more for example let's say in your own home uh your uh, your son or a daughter goes to college now there is a checklist of items that they should pick it up now as a father or a mother you say did you take care of this did you take care of this many a times you will be helpful to them so similarly in work also if you come up with a mind map and identify the sub topics and then see okay this is enabled this is discussed this is discussed what about this okay let's put some due date towards this you become the best team member of your team and not only that you will discover the subject well you help people to think structurally and your own ideas your own dreams also you will be seeing the connects among different topics and you basically create a narrative for that see friends it's important that you build a narrative it's important see 
let's talk about you know you're not happy with a certain situation right and you are hurt uh, you felt like you know uh, somebody did not treat you well most often you see you may not get an opportunity to go and explain what has happened why because first of all they may not give time even if they give time the time is not sufficient even if sufficient time is there while you go and discuss they will be talking you will be talking and the discussion will go somewhere else and at the end of one hour you see that what i want to discuss where the discussion has go has gone there is no connect it happens so that's why you write a background what is the trigger for this what's the idea what's the thought that you wanted to present what are the expected outcomes what are the actual outcomes what are the follow up actions where the gap has come you write it down friends i'm telling you i may find myself time consuming to write but there were situations wherein i prepare a document and a one page document and i kept it and then i present it to the other partner and said look please go through it this is what i want to discuss now even if that person or because of me or that partner the discussion goes in different way i can always say this is not what i wanted to discuss i have already presented this can you please go through it and tell me see the narrative the stand alone document helps us a lot it brings the hidden facts that are difficult to explain as we may not get opportunity or see friends i'm telling you your pain only you know right so if you if you put a narrative to it and present it then it brings you know clarity to where you wanted to focus upon similarly as a manager as a leader let's assume that you have chosen certain vendor and you made a decision to go with certain vendor and you rejected certain vendors right so why so and so proposals were not accepted why certain proposals were accepted and what is the data log who has approved the moment you put it in document tomorrow even if you are not there in that particular office it acts as a record and that is a group of group effort team effort not as an individual effort so it may it may feel like we are spending some time to narrate some some time to write but the build the time you write the narrative and explain the logic make a stand alone document it helps these are all we know it is just that we have to reset our uh, inner strengths our we have to reset our uh, uh, habits so that we can get benefited because today we are in the age of speed while yesing with the speed we need certain techniques to bring back that is one of them is you know writing it down so friends my advice to you is write 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 okay whatever the thought is writing it down does have lots of benefits because our brain takes it very seriously it connects us to our inner self the root chakra that's why we remain focused and we get on to autopilot mode we complete the tasks objectives goals and ideas in autopilot mode and hence we become more efficient and effective and our brain gets freed up and reminds with one thought for example if we are perplexed with many thoughts the moment you take one thing at a time it makes you to bring your best out of you towards that particular task and it it is one kind of relaxation friends believe me everybody says do meditation what is meditation meditation is all about you know just focus on one thought just focused on breathing similarly focusing one thing at a time is also a kind of a meditation if you wanted to take tea just take tea if you want to take uh, if you want to do one job do one that do only that job that makes you focused and the moment you get that habit of staying focused many things will come in line and you become more uh, you know uh, achiever and more result oriented and your brain gets freed up 
it remains with one thought and you shift left strategy that means you get on to important but not urgent quadrant the moment you shift left what happens is you tend to plan your quarter sometimes a year every month for sure you plan what i wanted to complete in this week you will come to know and thus you plan your day better so we go towards the right zone and also because we are working on important and not urgent we become healthier because we tend to start the task well up front and we become healthier we become younger and uh, and then we always have a satisfaction that you know we did our best to this moment so that means friends i'm telling you when you write when you, it leads you to plan it leads you to connect yourself it leads you to reengineer yourself it makes you put your best efforts to that at the end of the day high probability of achieving the objectives or getting more creativity to your ideas whether the outcome comes or not but there will be a satisfaction that i have done my best with this i come to the end of the session i thank your interest to learn and i look forward to add more value add sessions in future okay thanks a lot friends and you know uh, many people have attended this session and the fact that on a saturday you spend this time it does show the kind of uh, importance you give for learning i wish you all the best and let us reconnect soon thank you very much